number nine, we are going to talk about FBNC. What is this FBNC all about? It is facility based neonatal care. There are beta three levels to this facility based neonatal care. The three levels are we have the SNCU, which is at the top level. Then you have the newborn stabilization unit. We also call it as the NBSU. And then the lowest center is the NCC newborn care corner. So you have these three things, SNCU, NBSU and NCC questions on these now. So if you talk about the NCC, it is available at all delivery points. It is available at all delivery points. It could be the delivery huts or the PHCs or the sub centers. So what are the facilities which are available in a newborn care corner? It is simple, basic resuscitation kits, resuscitation kits. So it will be like for early neonatal care, a clean cloth will be there for wrapping around the baby, a gauze piece will be there to wipe the mouth and the eyes of the baby and things like these. These are basic things which are there. And then at the NBSU, at the NBSU, there has to be a doctor facility. Doctor facility has to be there. So technically the MCQ can be that NBSU will be available at what level onwards? Will it be at the village level, subcenter level, PHC, CHC? Answer has to be a PHC level onwards. So at a PHC level onwards, you have kind of the advanced resuscitation equipments which are available like for example warmer will be there a suction machine will be there catheters will be there and things like this then you have these SNCUs SNCUs are available at bigger hospital these are special okay special newborn care units so these are available at district level hospitals district hospitals and these are specialized areas. See, try to understand there is one more important understanding over here that the NCC, newborn care corner, will it be within the labor room, near to or adjacent to the labor room or away from the labor room? What do you want to say? The newborn care corner, did you see the delivery hut? If you recall the image of delivery hut, I told that within the hut, there is a OT table, there is a delivery, disposable delivery kits and there is NCC. So NCC is within the labor room okay within the labor room and the nbsu newborn stabilization there'll be warmer there'll be some instruments there'll be adrenaline inject injections and things like this will it be within the labor room near or adjacent to the labor room or away common sense it is just adjacent to the labor room so this is just adjacent or the just very near to the labor room. Whereas if you talk about the SNCUs, these are away from the labor rooms. These are a district hospital. It's a full fledged ward. Have you ever heard of NICUs? NICU stands for neonatal ICU. So in private hospital, we have the NICUs. SNCU is a government NICU. So SNCUs will be basically, these are full fledged wards with 10 to 12 beds. They have a 24 by seven doctor plus nurse facility. So basically we have set up the SNCUs where there is more than 3000 deliveries happening every year. So if the load is more than 3000 deliveries, we have tried to set up something called as the special newborn care units. So the special newborn care units will be 10 to 12 bedded. They, these are like this is what you see as a ward. It is more than 10 to 12 bedded. Each bed will be more than 100 square feet per bed. So this whole unit is like 1000 square feet area. And this is what you have in a specialized newborn care center units. These are you have these uh, big incubators and all, all 24 seven, you'll have a specialized doctor that is pediatrician or a preferred would be neonatologist who's working in the SNCUs. Another MCQ which can be asked is like, what is the admission criteria to the SNCU? In the SNCU, what is the admission criteria? Admission criteria. When will we send a patient criteria? When will we send the patient to SNCU? See, in case the baby is very sick, that means in case there is very low birth weight, low, very low birth weight of the baby, less than 1800 grams, or if there is cyanosis of the baby, there is severe anemia or pallor or if there is severe jaundice of the baby. If the body temperature 
is hypothermia if the body temperature is less than 36.4 degrees Celsius or if the baby is showing fits or convulsions showing fits or convulsions if there is severe anemia severe pallor any major congenital anomalies any major congenital anomalies so all these ba babies will be handled in SNCU so technically what I want you to understand is that when we have a baby at a PHC or a CHC who is having the criteria SNCU admission criteria they will be called as the baby has to be upgraded from NBSU to SNCU and when these things are okay in a person when the admission criteria is gone like the pallor is not there the anemia is not there the jaundice is not there the bleeding has stopped in case of bleeding also right the bleeding has stopped in a child so in those cases you will you will do downgrade so i i just want you to uh, appraise you with the words that there is a downgradation criteria which is this one and there is upgradation criteria which is again this one so i hope you understand that what is a downgradation or a upgradation criteria in newborn special newborn care units point number 10 is RBSK Rashtri Bal Swasthya Karagram Rashtri Bal Swasthya Karagram first MCQ what do you mean by a Bal who is a Bal in this Balak who is a Balak Balak is 0 to 5 years 0 to 1 year 0 to 10 year 10 to 12 year 10 to 19 years 0 to 19 year what do you want to say answer is Balak is always a Balak under 18 year will be always a Balak for us so this is a Rashtri Bal Swasthya Karagram it is for all age group 0 to 18 year children so what is the objective of this Rashtri Bal Swasthya Karagram? The objective is to have four Ds. Will you remember that for me? Please remember there are four Ds. What are the four Ds? There is we are doing screening. We are doing screening for these four Ds. The screening will be done for diseases of childhood. The screening will also be done for developmental delays in the childhood. The screening will also be done for some of the congenital defects congenital defects in the childhood and the fourth D will be regarding the deficiencies in childhood. So it's like please remember it's for four D's diseases deficiency defects and uh, delays. So that is what you have in RBSK you are going to talk about the defects the deficiencies the delays and the diseases of the childhood out of all these I know you won't be able to remember all the 29 you will not be able to remember all the 29 things or the parameters in RBSK but I would like you to remember the most important deficiencies which we take care we always will be accounting for we will screen the child for goiter we will screen the child always for severe acute malnutrition we will screen for rickets that is vitamin D vitamin A and hemoglobin can you remember which vitamins are screened in in the RBSK this can be question that is we are screening for vitamin A and vitamin D which mineral is screened it is both iron that is hemoglobin and iodine that is goiter they both are screened and of course energy disorder that is the severe acute malnutrition is screened these are the deficiencies which are screened in RBSK the point number 11 next one is RKSK Rashtra Kishore Swasthya Karagram so in Rashtra Kishore Swasthya Karagram you can see a Kishore who is flying a kite a Kishore is flying a kite K for Kishore K for kite remember Kishore is flying a kite so that's the logo next in line if you talk about the Rashtra Kishore Swasthya Karagram MCQ for you who's the Kishore is it a Kishore only or is it does it include the Kishori as well so Kishore I think we all understand it's a adolescent person adolescent child so the adolescent age group is 10 to 19 years so the, it includes please note Kishore and Kishori as well it includes the boys and you remember what is the focus of RM and CH plus A it is the adolescent girl how can you think of leaving adolescent girl so adolescent girl is included under this program this is what is RKSK Rashtra Kishore Swasthya Karagram the name is Kishore but it includes the Kishore and the Kishori what is the objective of this program what do you think we launched this RKSK for see uh, uh, the, the objective is to have a healthy adolescent so what is what do you mean by healthy adolescent in simple words what is the strategy what are the things we are doing in RKSK so the strategy of RKSK the strategy of RKSK is that we are trying to open clinics in clinics we will do some counseling 
we will do some counseling for the adolescent children boys and girls with some special content with a special way of communication communication with convergence convergence means everything together with convergence of the resources and giving them health care to the community to the community so basically this program is c c c c c and c and c so how many c's you see i see one two three four five six seven seven c's you see this program is basically tackling seven c's we are going to build clinics that is the rksk clinics for counseling with the content for communication convergence for healthcare and a good community that is what is the the basis of the RKSK program. So just don't forget the seven C's in the RKSK. Another strategy for you is that uh, the adolescents will listen to whom? Do they listen to their parents? Do Will the adolescent listen to the juniors or to their friends? Adolescent will always listen to their friends. And we in Government of India, we also knew this, that adolescent will never listen to their parents or seniors. So we launched the scheme is called as a Sathya scheme. It is called as a Sathya approach, also called as a peer-to-peer -peer approach. That means from a friend to the friend approach. That is what is the MCQs you will get. Sathya approach is found in where? It is found in RKSK, 7 C's in RKSK. It is to have adolescent, healthy adolescent. Another MCQ is about the strategy. We are still on the strategy of RKSK. So you heard about the seven C's, you heard about the Sathya approach. Other strategies for we want healthy adolescents is to provide them iron folic acid supplementation under the Anemia Mukt Bharat scheme. You remember we already discussed the Anemia Mukt Bharat in preventive obstetrics video module. So under the Anemia Mukt Bharat scheme, all the children who are enrolled with the RKSK, all the adolescents, they will be getting the iron folic acid supplements. And the next one is similar to the RKSK point number 12 is adolescent reproductive and sexual health. It's similar to the RKSK because the focus in RKSK is also adolescent. The focus of adolescent reproductive sexual health is also adolescent. What is the objective? It's the same objective. We want to have a healthy adolescent. You remember what is the focus in RM and CH? That is to have healthy adolescent. Adolescent is the only person who is not dependent on the mother or the child to be healthy. So we can change the adolescent. What is the strategy? If you are the government of India, you want to make the adolescents in your district healthy. How will you make it? Very simple. You open something called as Arsh Clinic. Actually, do you know that RKSK is a newer version of the Arsh Clinic? But anyways, that is different. Arsh is different. So we had something called as Arsh Clinics. Arsh Clinics. In the Arsh Clinics, we were providing, we are still providing the WIFs, MCQ, WIFs. The, these are not my words. These are not my abbreviation. That's the government of India abbreviation. It's called as WIFS. WIFS stands for weekly iron folic acid supplementation. It stands for weekly iron folic acid supplementation. Again, which is given under the Anemia Mukt Bharat. You remember Anemia Mukt Bharat? So WIFS is given in the Anemia Mukt Bharat to all adolescents. Do you remember in Anemia Mukt Bharat, which were the adolescents? It is all girls from the school, from without the school. All girls 10 to 19 and the boys who are good boys who go to school. So all girls who go to school, not go to school, that's okay. They will be taken in. And all boys who go to school, they are taken as uh, the beneficiaries for iron folic acid uh, supplementation under the Anemia Mukta Bharat scheme. Second, we also want to have a good menstrual hygiene for the adolescent. This program is primarily for the adolescent girls. We want to have healthy menstrual hygiene, menstrual hygiene that is to provide sanitary pads and all third point is under the arch program is to provide them with counseling counseling regarding family planning services regarding a family life also regarding a healthy family life and uh, how to have a healthy birth and so on right from the adolescent age group also now the point is that when we launched the Arsh program or the Arsh clinic were launched in the in the in the communities this was a big flop show and nobody came to the clinic because no parent would allow their daughters to go to a adolescent reproductive and sexual clinic right sexual health clinic because of this name of a sexual clinic because it had a cultural in inhibitance in itself 
so the people were very uh, innovative and they crossed this they said we'll uh, change the name of the arsh program and they changed the name to adolescent friendly health clinic so now the afhcs are nothing but the new name for the arsh clinic and they are running nicely that is what is adolescent friendly health clinic the main focus is to give them counseling menstrual hygiene and weekly iron folic acid supplements along with uh, taking care of any rtis stis reproductive tract infections and so on next in line is number 13 program long name that is integrated management of neonatal and childhood illnesses i m n c i MCQ number one. What do you mean by integrated in the integrated management of neonatal and childhood illnesses? Don't answer me that you are saying that the integration, sir, is because of the mother integration with the neonate and with the child. Nothing of that sort. The WHO program. Do you know that the WHO they launched the program as called as the IMCI, that is the integrated management of childhood illnesses. We in India we included the neonatal component into it. do you know this so can you tell me if that was the reason can you tell me what is integrated in imci even without neonate so try understanding what is the integration integration is for the manpower integration is for the human resource human resource just try to imagine that you know that one doctor is working at what level do you remember from the health systems chapter that we discussed about the public health system in india one doctor is available at a phc one phc is for how much population one phc is for 30000 population so can you imagine that you will be or somebody will be one medical officer sitting for 30000 population out of the 30000 population do you know how many people will be under 15 years roughly one quarter so roughly 25 26% of people will be less than 15 years of age so out of 30000 if you are talking we are talking of 5 to 6000 children out of this 5000 6000 children usually 2% of the children will always be having some problem some disease 2% so out of 5 6000 2% will be around 100 200 children so we are technically talking that at single time 2 300 children or 100 children will always have some problem so doctor cannot take care of all the childhood problems all the mother problems in the community so why not to teach anganwadi workers they will treat the children the lab workers will treat children the health workers any health worker any frontline worker which includes the asha workers the anganwadi workers the school teachers even the lab technicians the mpws the male female the anms we taught everybody to start treating the children and on all the diseases which could be affecting the neonates and children so many diseases we take took care in imnc anganwadi worker or asha worker understand that how to treat the neonatal and childhood problems like malaria typhoid diarrhea pneumonia they will treat so we cannot ask them to read op ghai or we cannot ask them to read nelson or take pediatric uh, lectures from somewhere it's not possible so what is the strategy the strategy is l act l act l means look assess look assess classify and treat strategy so we just taught them that uh, uh, to the asha workers anganwadi workers don't worry whenever you get a sick child you just do l act look at the child assess the child classify the child and treat the child what does this mean so what we gave to her to the asha workers is a table for every disease for every disease we made a simple table and that is called as the imnci booklet it is available online it is available almost everywhere everybody can download that so this imnci booklet we made and we start teaching everyone so in the booklet for every disease there is one page and each disease will be divided into only three categories this is standard only three classes will be there the top class is a pink category mind it the mcq wale i know are so worse people they will ask you that the top category is pink category or red category next year it will be maroon or magenta i don't know how bad the mcqs are but that's how it is please note it is not a red category it is a pink category the second category is a yellow category the second category is a yellow category and the last category is a green category
So now we have divided all the diseases based on their symptomatology into three features, three classes that is pink category, yellow and the green. If the child falls in the pink category, it will be different for every disease. Malaria has its own pink category, pneumonia own pink category, diarrhea own pink category, typhoid own pink, everybody has its own categories. If the child is falling in the pink category, then we have to do urgent referral but before urgent referral give first aid give first aid to the child plus do urgent referral in case the child falls in the yellow category you have to treat the child plus do adequate follow-ups you have to treat the child plus do adequate follow-ups in case the child is in green category simple you give first aid or in case you give reassurance reassurance plus you give a home based management you give reassurance and you give a home based management care management plan to the child uh, or, and you teach the mother how to how to take care of the child in a much better manner you do health education you do health education so please note that this is what is elact strategy you look at the child you assess you classify based on the pink yellow or the green category and then you treat the child so that is what the questions will be on imncr that in imncr what is the strategy we use we use a l act strategy <laughs>